For me, it really only takes one special moment to make a dive. One night, Yolanda, our Beyond the Corals dive guide, aka the frogfish whisperer, not only found a frogfish, but a baby frogfish. At most, it was an eighth of an inch. Thanks to Yolanda's initial guidance, Leslie and I were able to spot one several nights later on our own. So, you know, the average diver can spot these as well. If you know what you're looking for. So far, we've highlighted dive sites north of Kralendijk and south of the airport, but there's plenty of shore diving around the city as well. First up, something special. It's a fairly large site located at the north end of Kaya Crane. We say large because the shore entry is at the end of the road, but the mooring buoy for dive boats is about 500 feet northwest. The site definitely lives up to its name, as we had so many first-time encounters. Like this Atlantic yellow cowrie, this black point sculling crab, and what I think is a stirrer's cave shrimp, but I'm still checking with experts on that. We also saw the most active greater soapfish we've ever seen. Leslie and I often joke that they appear to be the laziest fish in the sea. Unfortunately, we did spot a cluster of lionfish on one of our night dives. But there are brown chromas, thank god. We have lots more footage in the sea life section of this video, but right now, we'd like to ask for your subscription. Short and sweet. Although the more I talk about it being quick, the less it is. So, subscribe! Thanks! Smiley face. Something special is on the northern end of downtown Krylandike. To get there, drive north on Kaya Nicholas de Brut for 0.8 miles. Kaya Crane is not marked, so look for a road on the left opposite a very nice paved shoulder with a blue directional arrow sign. Turn there, and in one block you'll hit the shore. The dive site is at the end of the brick driveway to the right. There is limited parking, and it's a bit narrow for turning a truck around, but people do park there. We generally turn left, and find a spot in front of one of the houses. There are some trees along the street that can shade your car, and a few along the ocean side as well. One near the entry has a nice chair and other makeshift seating to enjoy a surface interval looking out over the water. Another up the street has shoes? in it for some reason? Anyway, as for gearing up, we've seen people do it at their vehicle or come already prepared. There are no real amenities directly associated with the site. However, there are two dive friends facilities a few blocks away in case you have an equipment issue or need something at the last minute. The official entry is at the north end of the driveway near the wall mural. Although you can certainly enter a block or two south and swim a bit to the right. If you do enter there, note that the last steps are quite high from the bottom. The marked entry is much easier than many other sites on Bonaire. There is a bit of slope to the rock and coral shoreline, but after that it's a walk in the park. Uh, water. The reef starts about 150 feet from shore but the sea life starts as soon as you get in. There will likely be fish around as you stand in the shallows, and be careful where you step as a blenny might be living in that rock. We recommend dropping down and swimming out underwater as there is a lot of interesting life on the sandy bottom. 
but you could surface swim if you like. That said, the Harbor Village Marina is located about 1,000 feet to the north. There are a ton of boats moored south along the Krylindyk coast. Local fishermen pass by. And other small craft sometimes go very fast in between the other boats. All that traffic means you should be very careful whenever near the surface. From shore, the reef lies at 215 degrees southwest, so point your compass 35 degrees northeast to get back. As you swim out to the reef, the sand gets mixed with years of coral debris, punctuated every once in a while by small coral heads and boat moorings. The relatively flat bottom only reaches 15 to 20 feet at the drop-off, which makes this a great place to snorkel. When you get to the drop-off, the slope increases significantly, as do the coral structures. While the reef at Something Special does have large concentrations of coral and sponges, there are also patches of rock and sand as well. Here are some examples of the reef and its slope down to 100 feet. The top of the drop-off is really full of life. We've seen schools and just lots of fish in general all along the edge. A grazing turtle might even swim through. Still, you know what part of the site we really enjoy? The shallows. As with any shore dive, there are shallows to explore and something special has lots of different habitats. What may seem like a boring seafloor to some actually has quite a bit of life, like these mohara, this bearded fireworm, grazing goatfish, Spanish hogfish and yellow wrasse, green razorfish, yellow jawfish, and peacock flounder, to name a few. There are also small coral heads, which often have fish hanging around. But don't just swim by. Lots of blennies make their homes in brain coral and other places with small holes. And most of the boat moorings are small neighborhoods as well. Oh, and don't just keep your head down. We saw white mullets at the surface during the day and needlefish at night. If you travel along the drop-off to the right, you will see a few coral restoration trees. The island really is big on these efforts, and it's an ideal place to volunteer, get trained, and even certified to help restore the underwater habitats, which is nice. From the moment you walk in, Start checking things out, because you never know what might be swimming by. One morning, we caught a group of white mullets skipping along the bottom, looking for food. We also saw this spotted trunkfish nibbling on something tasty, but then realized it was a small sea star. And there was this honeycomb cowfish eating what looked to be a jelly of some sort. From far away, it looked like this Graysby was getting cleaned. As we got closer, white antennae were sticking out of its mouth, perhaps a banded coral shrimp. Hopefully, it ended peacefully. There were lots of other great animals as well, like this family of 10 Peterson cleaner shrimp hanging out on a giant anemone. 
Here are a few more things you might see while diving something special. When the sun goes down, some really fascinating animals come out. Within a few feet from shore, we caught this sharp tail eel coming out of its burrow. And that wasn't even close to the best thing we saw. Check out this Atlantic yellow cowrie. It was a first time capture for us, and man can that thing move! Quite a bit slower and easy to spot from the trail it leaves was this massive red heart urchin. Leslie found this very skittish black point sculling crab, another first time capture. Then there was a baby octopus which seemed a little timid amidst all the small fish darting around. There are so many things to see while diving something special at night. Here are some additional clips of amazing creatures you may see after dark. Enjoy! Enjoy.